Our reporting today says President Zelensky has instructed his military leaders uh, to prepare actions, in quotes, actions that would allow the grain deal to continue functioning. Do you know what those actions are and will the U.S. support them? I certainly wouldn't be in a position to know uh, what orders he's given to his military forces with respect to that. Uh, so I'd really rather not uh, try to even speculate. Uh, obviously, uh, we all want to see that uh, grain leave Odessa, leave those Black Sea ports and get to so many countries who are so desperately in need uh, of that grain and those foodstuffs. It's uh, absolutely uh, irresponsible and reckless and dangerous that Mr. Putin has decided to pull out of this grain deal. Uh, and we urge him to uh, to reconsider. How concerning is it to you in the White House about an escalation of fighting within the Black Sea? Because we have seen Kiev and Moscow trade these tit-for-tat barbs, putting any ships on warning that would enter this area. Yeah. Yeah, deeply concerning, Anne-Marie, because basically what Mr. Putin's decided to do is reinstate this blockade. And make no mistake about it. That's what it is. It's a blockade of these of these ships, uh, not allowing them to leave uh, any port uh, on the Black Sea. And, and that can get ugly very fast. It could get violent very fast. In fact, yesterday we made public information that we had that the Russians detected and detonated what they claimed was an, a Ukrainian mine. Uh, and, and we believe that that could be laying the predicate for a false flag attack that they would then blame on the Ukrainians, whether it's mines or whether it's the, the use of unmanned surface vessels uh, to go after some of these ships. So we're deeply concerned about it. In fact, it's so concerned that that's why we made uh, downgraded some of that intelligence and made it public uh, yesterday so that we could call the Russians out before they have a chance to, uh, to execute plans like that. Admiral, there's reporting today that Ukraine has begun using the cluster munitions that we provided uh, just days or a couple of weeks ago at this point. I wonder if that's something that the U.S. was made aware of. But more specifically, will the U.S. make a commitment to help clean up the munitions left behind, the unexploded, undetonated munitions from those cluster bombs when this conflict mercifully someday ends? The answer to both those questions is yes, indispute, indisputably. The uh, Ukrainians have been keeping us informed of their use of the cluster munitions, so we knew that they were on the battlefield, we knew that they were using it. And I would go so far as to tell you, again, or early days here, but <clears throat> the reports that we're getting from the Ukrainians are that they're using them uh, in, the, in a responsible way, in an effective way. They're getting behind Russian defensive lines and going after units and command and control capability uh, for the Russians. Uh, they're being judicious in the way they're using it, uh, just like they promised us that they would. And of of course, even before we made this decision to give them cluster munitions, uh, we've been helping them uh, with demining efforts, and that will absolutely continue whenever this war is over, uh, and the Ukrainians know that they have our firm commitment to that. Admiral, I want to ask you about what's going on in North Korea with Private King. Uh, any worry that he indeed defected and could share secrets with North Korea? <clears throat> our biggest worry, Anne-Marie, is knowing or not knowing where he, where he is, uh, and what his well-being is, his health, um, or how he's being kept. Uh, we, we have to assume, sadly, uh, that, uh, that he's not being held uh, in very humane conditions because of the brutal nature of this regime. We want to know where he is, we want to know he's okay, and we want to get him back uh, to the United States and to his family where he belongs. Um, uh, look, I, I can't speak to uh, what access this young man had to information. Uh, he was a private in the Army uh, uh, at a fairly low level. Uh, so, again, I, I don't know what his clearance was or what he had, uh, but our biggest concern right now is finding out where he is, how he is, and how we can get him home. Well, there's one country who could probably definitely help with trying to get him home, and that would be China. And I want to ask you about some diplomacy that's been going on with China. Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State, was there. He not only sat down with Xi Jinping, but he sat down with Li Shang-Fu, who has sanctions on him, which is why the Chinese said that they weren't willing to set up this meeting with uh, Li and Lloyd Austin. Biden told me at the G7 it was under consideration that the administration was looking at lifting those sanctions on Li Shang-Fu. Is that still the case? Would they consider lifting those sanctions to have a pathway for him to sit down with his proper counterpart, which is Lloyd Austin? Uh, we want to we want to open up military to military communications. Um, we are working to get other lines of communication open. You saw Secretary Blinken, Secretary Yellen 
then uh, Special Envoy Kerry going. Uh, and th those are all good signs. But we still don't have the military lines of communication open. Uh, and as the president said, he'd be willing to consider looking at that if, uh, you know, if it would make sense. He has made no such decision uh, to lift sanctions uh, on the defense minister at this time. That said, and I said this yesterday, uh, sanctions aside, it's it's re it's deeply regrettable uh, that a civilian uh, uh, operating in a civilian capacity is able to to meet with uh, and have a discussion with military leaders uh, in in the PRC and our own Secretary of Defense and our own Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff still cannot. That's not a healthy situation when you consider the the level of tensions between our two countries, particularly in the Indo-Pacific. Admiral, I want to ask you about an important conversation that's made its way into the White House, certainly uh, today, as the president spoke earlier about the potential dangers and benefits of artificial intelligence. Here's what he said. We'll have you react. We must be clear eyed and vigilant about the threats emerging of emerging technologies that can pose, don't have to, but can pose to our democracy and our values. This is a serious responsibility. We have to get it right. And there's enormous, enormous potential upside as well. The idea of artificial intelligence has tentacles that spread into a lot of different areas of our lives, potentially here, Admiral. But I'm curious your thoughts on the military use of artificial intelligence. Congressman Seth Moulton was on with us recently calling for a Geneva Convention for AI. How much time does the U.S. have to get its arms around the use of artificial intelligence on the battlefield? We are all taking this uh, very seriously and with a sense of urgency, whether it's in the military domain or, or any other domain, even in the private sector. That's why the president wanted to meet with these uh, big tech uh, executives, seven of them uh, today, to talk mm -hmm. about the future of AI. And this was very much a future-focused conversation. And it, yes, it covers military technology, but well beyond that. So the bottom line to your answer, Joe, is we're moving out with alacrity, we're moving out with a sense of urgency, and we're doing it in partnership with the private sector as appropriate. The president also wants to work with Congress, uh, with folks like uh, Congressman Moulton, uh, to work on appropriate legislation that can give some of these initiatives some teeth and that will be able to hold actors, state and non-state actors, properly accountable for the responsible method of using a AI in the future. Mm -hmm. I just want to end on what's going on in the holdup um, in Congress when it comes to these military confirmation. But Senator Tuberville made it sound like his hold of these promotions could be resolved. There was a give and take from the White House. Are you willing to entertain anything to satisfy his demands to start getting this train moving? The president has said uh, if he thought that a conversation with the senator would, would actually make a difference here, that he'd be willing to do that. The senator has had uh, several conversations, including very recently with the secretary of defense. Uh, he keeps saying, including today, that, uh, that nothing's going to change his mind except uh, the Pentagon pulling back this, uh, this policy, which allows military members, uh, women and women family members of the military, the opportunity, if they live in a state, where the abortion laws are restrictive uh, to get time off and some travel allowance to go to another state to, to receive the proper reproductive health care that they deserve, that they need. Uh, and that policy means a lot. It means a lot to the, the men and women of, of the armed forces. The Secretary of Defense has full authority to execute that policy. It matters to our people. Uh, so I don't see any uh, change in the policy itself. M Mr. Senator Tuberville just needs to do the right thing. He's holding up hundreds of officers from leadership assignments. Look at the things that you and I were just talking about. Uh, it, China, uh, Ukraine, uh, the, 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 what's going on in the Middle East. There is a lot in the world that's, uh, that we're facing from a national security perspective. We need military leaders in these jobs. He needs to do the right thing for national security and stop having an impact on our readiness and, quite frankly, stop having such a deleterious effect on the health and well-being of our families, who, by the way, don't get to decide where they get assigned. They get told. That's why they call them orders. They get told where to go. Uh, and they have every right to expect that the Department of Defense is going to look after them and their health care.